What up, guys? Happy Friday night to you. Shoot, let me see if I can get the, uh, the live chat up here. I don't know what's going on, but I need to be able to see who's in here. I don't know if I've got the chat set up. Let me, uh... I think I've got my view set up wrong. Here we go. All right. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm going to give you just a couple minutes to hop in here before we get into tonight's topic, which is going to be uh, finesse jigs if Ron Holly gets his butt in here. I don't know if he's planning on being here or what tonight, but um, he did request talking about uh, jig trailers in particular for like uh, mini jigs, like the striking Bitsy Bug, stuff like that. Guys, hit me up in that chat section. Let me know if you're here. Let me know how you're doing this Friday night. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm gonna run through a few things. Um, couple packages that I picked up in the last week or so and then talk about jigs for a little bit depending on who hops in here Ryan what's up dude happy Friday to you I just posted on Instagram like 30 minutes ago I picked up a couple of sweet new jerk baits that are going in my box this is the mega bass vision 110 plus one in the junior size this is a new addition to uh, the market here in the last year. They've been really hard to get uh, no matter where you buy them. They've been selling out like immediately. So this is the junior size, but in a deeper diving, this thing goes uh, upwards of seven feet. So doing well, Ryan, thanks for asking. Riley Belden in the house with $2 straight out the gate. How you doing, Riley? Thank you so much for the donation. Appreciate you. So, yeah, this is the Vision 110 Plus One Junior. Still makes a racket like the standard 110 and the 110 Junior. Um, but this thing is going to dive a few feet deeper. You know, Plus One stands for Plus One Meter in extra diving depth. So the standard plus one um, or the standard vision 110 is going to dive, you know, in that four to five foot range. And then the plus one dives in that six to seven foot range, sometimes even a little deeper, depending on the line that you're using. If you went down to, to 10 or even eight pound test, if you so dare, uh, you could get this thing deeper. But on a standard 12 pound test, you could get this thing close to or right at about seven feet deep. So I picked up three of them. This one is the GG Perch Orange Belly color. This one is perhaps my favorite color and it's called Matte Shad. And then lastly, just got that classic color pattern called Elegy Bone, which is that like skeleton, purple back, chartreuse belly. So um, they do run about 20 bucks a bait, but I saw them in stock at the hookup tackle. So I couldn't help it, but just grab a couple of them and start with like the colors that I have the most confidence in. I do have a number of them um, in the other sizes and diving depth models in my jerkbait box. You know, I've, I've got a bunch of the Vision 110s, the Plus 1s, and the Vision 110 jun Juniors. So, um, felt kind of obligated to pick up a couple of the Plus 1 Juniors. But anyway, 
Ron Holly in the building. What's up, dude? Simon, yo. Glad to, glad to see you guys in here. Hope you're doing well. Um, I recorded an unboxing video of this package right here the other day, but you know, my voice is still a little bit messed up. I am fairly certain that I'm suffering from what they call chronic hoarseness. So I'm not feeling under the weather or anything weird like that, but my voice is still messed up. So um, I don't know if I'm going to re-record the video, but this is my monthly discount tackle unboxing for the month of January. And I'll show you real quick what's in this package. Um, I got a real hodgepodge variety of baits and I'm pretty excited about it. So um, I'll kind of start with hard baits and then go to, you know, jigs and terminal tackle and then go to soft plastics real quick. I'll just run through these. I'm not going to take them all out of the package, but picked up one of the Lucky Craft Lightning Pointer 98 XRs. No, Simon. Um, I got tested for COVID a week and a half ago. Uh, came back negative. I mentioned that in my stream last weekend. Um, so, no. Did not, do not have COVID. Just have, um, I had a little bit of a cough and it turned into just a hoarse voice, uh, which hasn't come back. It's gotten better, gotten worse, gotten better, gotten worse. So, it is what it is. Anyway, this is the Lightning Pointer 98. A couple cool things about it. Not only is this color wicked, it's called the MS American Shad, but this bait has a slender tail, a little bit more um, erratic action than say the standard Pointer 100, and it does dive a little bit deeper. This guy dives six to seven feet on its own. The Pointer 100 goes like four to five feet, and this guy only retails for 10 bucks. So tough to beat that. Um, also got the Yozuri Rattle and Vibe in one of their smaller sizes. You've seen me unbox the same bait in the, the more standard half ounce size just like a couple months ago. I love this color, it's called matte black. It's, it's all black with a little bit of purple and blue in it. And uh, the rattle and vibe makes a nice high pitch noise. It's got a lot of BBs in it. Tight vibration, solid lipless crankbait, JDM quality for a very reasonable price tag. So I uh, couldn't help myself there. Then I did pick up a few jigs and terminal tackle items. <clears throat> First off is the Tokyo rig. What up, William? Wife and kids are doing well. Wife is still doing well in the pregnancy. Thanks for asking, man. We're at the 32 and a half week mark now, so I'm still on track. This is the Tokyo rig in the worm hook version. Um, if you guys didn't know, originally the Tokyo rig came in just a like a um, EWG style, like this guy, and then l last year they released it in a flipping hook version, and also in a worm hook version. So each one has their own application and scenario where they're going to excel, and the worm hook obviously in the three odd size is going to serve me well for throwing mid-size worms. So for example, this bait right here, the Zoom Magnum Finesse Worm is one of my favorite mid-size baits to throw. It's a five inch fat stick style worm with a bulbous tail. I throw this thing on a shaky head, on a wacky rig, on a Texas rig, I throw it in a ton of different ways. Uh, throw it on a Nico rig, but on a Tokyo rig, I can see it doing really well too. So three out hook is going to, uh, to serve me best in terms of versatility. All 
All right, next up I got uh, two chatterbaits. You guys saw me open this chatterbait recently um, in one or two different colors. Thought I had one handy here on the desk, but um, I think it might be tied up on one of my rods. So this is the cross eyes chatterbait. Got another one unopened here. And this is just in the fire craw color. So a couple cool things about it are that it's got a five aught O'Shaughnessy style hook. So um, has a different shape hook that's going to pin fish just a little bit better. And it's got a wire weed guard, two strands, very flexible. And um, this is an awesome bait that uh, is super snagless. It's going to, to excel around heavier cover, especially wood. So I look forward to using that. And then also got the new uh, Eye Strike Chatterbait. I actually don't know a lot about this bait, but essentially what it is, is just the, uh, the Eye Strike Redfish Eye Jig Head with a chatterbait blade on it. And I had actually made one of these homemade um, using those queen, queen tackle switch blades. I don't know if you remember me making my own chatterbaits, but um, I did. And like, here's one right here. So this is essentially what Z-Man just decided to create on their own and start selling in two packs. So this is the Redfish Eye Jig Head with a Chatterbait blade on it. And so they sell these in two packs. It's got a Mustad hook. This is the uh, 3 8 ounce, comes with a 5 odd hook. Pretty legit. Um, also from Z-Man, I got a pack of their banded skirts. So this is the Beehive Delight color, which is one of my favorite uh, chatterbait colors. Here's one for example. This is the heavy three quarter ounce jackhammer in the Beehive Delight color. It's got a green pumpkin top, kind of a shad side and a chartreuse belly. I have had tremendous success on that color and, uh, and they sell the skirts individually. So I plan to make my own jigs and chatterbaits or just use these as replacement skirts. Not quite sure, but um, figured I'd pick them up because I like that color a lot. And then I got a Kitek Mono Spin Jig. This is the one that BJ was talking about last week or was asking about. This is a, a true micro jig. It's 1 16th of an ounce. Tiny, tiny little jig, okay? So this is not even what Ron was asking about when he was asking about finesse jigs and the Bitsy Bug. This guy, let me just put it next to the Bitsy Bug and show you that the Bitsy Bug is a tiny jig. This is either a 1 8 or a 3 16 this is a 1 16th, okay? Micro jig does have a single um, single fiber weed guard on there. Very finesse cut, tiny silicone skirt on there and a minuscule size number three hook on there. So crazy little bait here, designed really to put a one and a half or two inch trailer on there. I don't even know that I really have any proper baits to put on as trailers, but you know, I'll play around and see if I do. I know that Kitek makes a, a little spider bait that's kind of perfect for that, but I don't have any, to be honest. <clears throat> All right, then I got a pack of the Z-Man Turbo Cross. I talk about this bait all the time. Here's one out of the package. This is a Speed Craw style bait made from Elastec. So it, it's going to have, a, of course it's gonna have fantastic durability, but it's also got good buoyancy. So 
I like this thing on a wide variety of techniques from you know the new pro bullets jig head to a Texas rig to a wobble head um, as a punch bait even on a Ned rig I mean you can fish the the turbo cross kind of any which way you want it's good on a chatter bait too so um, I've got this in like three or four different colors but didn't have any in June bug and I am planning on making a few of my own jigs with these Picasso fantasy football jig heads that I got in the June bug color so those should pair up quite well together and then I got a pack of the Powerbait Max Scent um, Hit Worms. This is not the Flat Worm, but rather the Hit Worm. This guy, unlike the Flat Worm, has a totally uh, round body. The Flat Worm has more of a bait fish or goby profile. And the Hit Worm is more like a traditional worm, but it does taper down quite a bit and gets very thin near the tail and then has a, a bulbous tail. So I'm not quite sure how uh, buoyant this thing will be, if at all, but just like its brother in the flatworm, this is gonna be an awesome drop shot bait, whether it's nose hooked or wacky rigged, it's gonna be a great Nico rig bait, um, if working the bait a little bit more aggressively. So, got that, this color is called uh, live pumpkin, or just pumpkin seed. And then, last but not least, I did get these two baits that uh, I forget who was asking about them last week on the live stream, but th these are the chase baits, the love bug and the flip flop, okay? And I'll show them to you up close right now. I'll take them out of the package, which is a little bit of a hassle, but these baits are pretty cool, man. Ron, what are you asking? How do you cast the uh, the Kitech jig, dude? You gotta have ultralight spinning gear. So um, I'll throw that on usually my trout rod, which <clears throat> here's what she looks like. This is a long. Uh, I think it's a nine foot rod. No, eight foot ultralight, four or six pound fluorocarbon leader. So very light setup. You could throw it on anything as heavy as like a, a medium light or maybe a medium rod, but you probably need something lighter than that. So yeah, you gotta have really light gear to be able to throw an ultralight jig like that. So here is the flip-flop. So a couple things that make this bait unique. One is the very thin beaver style kickers on here, okay? So this is going to fish a lot like a traditional beaver bait, but it's made to be fished on its own. So on a Texas rig, pegged or unpegged, or on a free rig, is where this thing is going to excel. You could also fish this on a wobble head and it's gonna have great action. But as you can see, without me even working the bait, it's got these side appendages, which are super wild. Oh, did my internet just trip out? Ow. Oh, I can't see myself anymore. Hold on for a second, guys. I'm refreshing my page. Something might be up with my phone. All right. Sorry about that. My phone was asking me a question because the internet is just a little bit spotty right now. So sorry about that. So the flip flop, look at these little side appendages. I mean, isn't that crazy? These things wave as the bait flows through the water column. It, it kind of has a squid-like um, 
appearance. I'm not sure if you guys have seen any of the videos of this bait underwater, but it is wild um, and pretty cool. Not just gimmicky, but um, it's legit. So this color here is called mud bug. Pretty standard crawfish pattern with like a brown back and a uh, little bit of uh, gold and kind of red and black flake in there. They call it rolling hood wings. So that like squid, the appendages. Now, they actually do say on the back of the pack, Carolina rig, Texas rig, jig trailer, or punch shot rig. So yeah, Tokyo rig, Carolina rig, Texas rig, I can see being an awesome way to fish these. Now, it's newer brother is this guy called the Love Bug. And it is essentially the same bait. They make it in all the same colors, but this guy has some speed craws. So, this color, which is wicked, um, is called Green Pumpkin Chartreuse. And it's a very light green pumpkin and a very bright chartreuse on the belly. So, very similar body in terms of profile and those hooded wings, but the kickers on this thing are totally different. And these have that V-cut shape, just like you'd see out of a speed craw, but with a little bit more bulk on the actual legs themselves, and it's got these longer antenna. So, I really like this bait, and think it will do that much better on like a um, like a wobblehead, you know, on more of a straight retrieve, whereas the flip-flop is gonna do better when hopping it, um, either on a Texas rig or on a Tokyo rig. So, typically speaking, you're gonna throw the flip-flop in colder water or higher pressured situations, and you're gonna throw the love bug in warmer water or where the fish are more active, if that makes sense. I'm not gonna throw these on the back of a jig just because then it gets rid of the whole, you know, uh, hood concept. And in my opinion, that's, that's the whole reason to have these baits. So, that's what I picked up from Discount Tackle this month. I uh, hope you guys liked that little preview. I will probably still post an unboxing video um, sometime soon, but like I said, my voice sounded pretty hoarse in the recording of that unboxing video. So let's move right on and talk about what Senor Ron Holly wanted to talk about this evening. And that is mini jigs, not micro jigs like the Kitech that we just looked at, but rather mini jigs like the Strike King Bitsy Bug, okay? Everybody should know about the Bitsy Bug. It is one of the cheapest and most reliable saw jigs on the market. It's got an Arky style head and a small-ish hook on there. I wanna say probably about a two-aught hook. And um, yeah, it's a pretty basic jig, but it only costs like, you know, two bucks a jig, if that. You might be able to find them even cheaper than that depending on where you shop. So in the same class as that, there are a couple of other baits that I do throw and um, here they are. So one is the Booyah, uh, what do they call it? They call it the Baby Boo Jig, I think. And it is essentially the same thing as the Bitsy Bug, but Golly, I just tried to pull out one Bitsy Bug and I grabbed four of them. Um, I have a lot of these Bitsy Bugs. But the main difference between these is the skirt material. You get a better skirt out of these, these baby boo jigs than you do out of the Bitsy Bug. And you get a little bit more firm of a weed guard. So it's going to come through cover just a little bit better. But that said, the Bitsy Bug is still... A classic bait um, and because of that arky shaped head it's very versatile 
and can be fished in a ton of different situations. I do not throw it into heavy cover, but anywhere I see a piece of cover, I will work something like a bitsy bug around the edges um, if I don't catch them on a moving bait first. So I throw a couple of other baits like that. This one is a smaller one. This is the Missile Baits uh, Ike's Micro Jig. You know, they make the mini flip. This is the Micro, which, which has a smaller hook. This is somewhere between a Bitsy Bug and that Kai Tech. So it is a really small one. And then I also, you know, thanks to Justin, our boy over in Wyoming, he gave me these Stanley Jigs just recently which fall right into that same category. These are a 3 16 ounce jig, same kind of arky style, head, thicker weed guard. I will probably thin this down a little bit, take off maybe five or 10 strands out of that, and it's got a heavier hook on it. So anyway, there are um, a handful of trailers that I really recommend. Ron, if you're listening. Matthias, what's up, dude? Frankie, what up, buddy? I thought maybe BJ would be in here. I wanted to talk to you guys about those reels. Um, I do have two, so I think I'm going to send one to Frankie and one to BJ, if we're being honest. So, Frankie, get in touch with me after tonight's stream, and uh, we'll talk about what makes the most sense for each of you. BJ was saying he's pretty flexible, but if I'm not mistaken, it was you who was saying uh, you don't have a bait caster, right? All right. So, uh, the, other, the other mini jig that I throw is this one from uh, Jewel. Jewel Baits, it's got a finesse cut skirt and, um, and because of the way that the, the skirt is put on there, it has rattle holders, but I don't put rattles on all of them, but the cool thing about that is the bait can sit flat and puts the hook up at just a little bit of an angle. So depending on the trailer that you use, um, it will present the trailer in a little bit more of like a defensive craw type of posture. So anyway, with the Bitsy Bug and most of these jigs, they typically have a standard lead keeper for your baits. They do not have a wire keeper, and therefore, I do not recommend uh, a Laztec Z-Man baits as your trailers on these jigs. Instead, I recommend something like this guy. This is the Strike King Baby Rage Bug, okay? This is one of my absolute favorite recent additions, and, um, and in my opinion, this is the best way to fish this bait. You can throw it on a neg, Ned rig, you can throw it on a free rig or a drop shot, but I think it excels on the back of like this Bitsy Bug. So I cut off just a little bit of the top. I'll show you what these baits look like straight out of the pack. They're a tiny little three inch Rage Bug, okay? downsized version of the original thing but it's the exact same design so i'll cut off like the first three ribs just bite that off twist it off and then thread it up onto the jig and it profile wise fits perfect most of these bitsy bugs um don't need to be trimmed down much but my rule of thumb when it comes to jig including these ones is that the skirt ought to be just a little bit longer than where the bottom of the hook is. So I will let the skirt dangle all the way and then I will trim just below the hook. So you can see I've actually got this going about a half a centimeter below the hook itself. But the Strike King Baby Rage Bug is probably my number one at the moment. Now another bait that was designed for say the Ned Rig, but will work tremendously well for this application as well is the yum ned craw okay 
This bait has just a little bit more, a um, little more buoyancy to it. Let me try and pull out one of these like orange pumpkin style uh, bitsy bugs and I'll show you what this guy looks threaded up on there. So this bait has a little bit more of a slender profile. It's not going to fill out the bait quite as much, but it's going to make for less action than you get out of that baby rage bug. So the baby rage bug is going to be perfect for say uh, most conditions, but there are gonna be some situations where you're fishing pressured bodies of water or colder water where you're gonna want just a little bit less action out of your trailer. So, I will thread that trailer up on there. I did not trim this down, so I'm just trying to see what it looks like, kind of stock. And here's what it looks like. I would say that's uh, pretty good. Now, if you're hopping this thing around, you're gonna get a very subtle kind of flap out of those claws, claws, if you will. If you're gonna kill the bait, those claws are pretty much going to lay down. So this is gonna be one where you're more going to slow work the bait and kind of scoot it along bottom. Whereas that baby rage bug is one where you're maybe going to hop the bait a little bit more aggressively and actually get those um, those claws to kick through the water column, okay? Now, a few others that I use frequently, and this box is dedicated to trailers for these baits. So there are roughly four others that I definitely wanna recommend. Maybe five. And I've got a couple consolations. So I've got two others from Strike King. One is the Strike King Baby Rage Craw. So the Rage Craw, just like the original, has these wide kickers that are going to be much more aggressive in how wide they kick and how much they kick, okay? So this is like a warm water bait specifically where you want to have a lot more action out of the bait. Now somewhere in between that Rage Craw and the, the Rage Bug is going to be this. This is the Kitek Crazy Flapper in its smallest size. This is the 2.8. And uh, I love this bait. Like, love this bait. Um, I've got three, three packs there, plus, you know, um, one or two colors loaded into the box. And for a while, this was my go-to because you can fish this thing however slowly you want the claws are pretty heavy themselves. So when you work the bait slowly, it doesn't have a, a super aggressive action like the Rage Craw does. But if you hop the bait um, and let it fall a little bit more, it's going to have a slightly more aggressive action than the Rage Bug does. So it's kind of right in between there. And then just barely more subtle than the Rage Bug is the Baby Rage Menace. So all three of these baits are awesome Rage Tail baits that they make in standard four inch sizes, or three and a half, I guess. They make them in Magnum four inch, and then these baby three inch size. So the Baby is an awesome Ned Rig bait, awesome small jig trailer, and an awesome like mini Texas rig bait. The Rage Menace Grub is one of my favorite overall soft plastic baits, has been for years.
and um, and I have a box dedicated to them. I've showed you guys before, and I'll prove it again. So this is six different colors of just the standard Rage Menace Grub. And in this box, I've got four colors of the Baby Rage Menace Grub. So highly, highly recommend that bait. Again, because it's a little bit more subtle than the Crazy Flapper from Kytec. It's a little bit more durable. It's thicker in its body profile. So it's more durable. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of float, but it has a reasonable amount of kick. So depending on how you work the bait, there's a lot that you can do with it. Now, if you want to go more subtle again, but have a little bit more of a, uh, a classic profile than say that yum Ned Craw does. The Ned Craw is, um, it's like an old school looking bait, okay? It, it tries to look realistic and it's got an interesting profile, but like I said, it's pretty flat and um, it's a little less versatile of a bait. Now, this next bait falls right into the same category as the Rage Menace Grub in that you can do a ton with this bait. This is the Berkeley Pit Boss Jr., okay? So what's cool about the Pit Boss Jr. is it's got four legs. So you can eliminate them. You can rip a couple of them off and have this be a super streamlined, like miniature flipping bait if you wanted it to be, or vice versa. You could remove the middle two and have this thing be kind of like the Baby Rage Craw, where it's gonna have a more exaggerated kick or you can leave all four on, and this thing will have a more typical beaver style action. So not a very aggressive kick, but it's a bait that, like I said, with the, the Baby Rage Menace Grub, does well on a miniature Texas rig, does great on a drop shot or a free rig. Um, I probably wouldn't throw this on a Ned rig as much as I do and would throw the Menace Grub. See, the Menace Grub I'll also throw on just like a standard ball head jig and fish this like I would, you know, a three inch um, curly tail grub. And then lastly is the Baby Zoom Lizard or uh, Tiny Brush Hog, they call it. So, you know, they make the Brush Hog the the uh, the baby brush hog, and then this year they came out with the mid-sized brush hog, but this is one that that is slept on quite a bit, and this is the tiny brush hog, so it's got all the same attributes of a brush hog, but in a three-inch profile. So on like a Carolina rig, on you know a, a tiny black and blue bitsy bug where you're going to drag the bait on bottom. This is a, a great option, okay? So, kind of got most of the spectrum covered there. Uh, about a half a dozen baits. If I had to choose only five, I would choose the Baby Rage Menace Grub, number one. The Baby Rage Bug, number two. The Kytec Crazy Flapper 2.8 as my third the Berkeley Pit Boss Jr. as my fourth, and the Zoom Tiny Lizard or Tiny Brush Hog as my fifth. I don't really want to confuse you too much, Ron, but if you wanted to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and you wanted to make that jig just a little bit more versatile, and you wanted to swim the bait, you could use a 2.8 inch. This is the Rage Swimmer, but same exact, this is the 2.75 inch Rage Swimmer, 
you could use the 2.8 inch Kitek swing and pack bat um, and you're gonna get a paddle tail instead of the kickers that you get out of the menace grub but same same concept what you can do with the menace grub is rig it so that the the tails are horizontal and you get that kick out of it or you can rig it vertical and you get a little bit more of like a swimming action okay so I don't think it's necessary to get a, a little two and three quarter inch or three inch um, swim bait but if you've already got them that's definitely one that you can use I figure William has already left because I think that comment's been here for a few minutes but if somehow some way you're still in here William thank you for jumping in at least for a short period of time man good to see you hope you have a great rest of your weekend uh, Frankie's asking, have you ever used Livingston lures? Yes, I have. Um, I own a handful of them. I've got a couple crankbaits and a couple poppers. And um, I think that they're decent. I feel a little bit mixed, right? I, I think they make their baits well. But I just am on the fence about... Uh, how effective their electronic bait fish technology system is. I don't know how much of a difference that actually makes. The sound, the croaking sound that they make um, is pretty quiet in my opinion. And so I generally think baits that you're going to either work on a, a stop and go retrieve or have worked really slowly will be most effective, but then again, I, I just look to quality. So I've got uh, one or two square bills. I've got their flat side crankbait. And I've got a couple poppers, like I said. So let me show you their flat side. It's actually really well made. Beautiful looking bait here, well crafted. This thing, honestly, the, the one downside to Livingston lures, in my opinion, is that they're a little expensive compared to most baits on the market. Now you're not paying JDM prices, but you definitely pay um, kind of halfway between typical manufacturers and JDM. So uh, that's that's a downside in my opinion. You know, when you can get the the Strike King KBD 1.5 flat for like 6 bucks and it's almost the exact same bait, the Livingston is going to cost you twice as much. It's a uh, it's a little bit hard to justify in my opinion. Now I did manage to find a couple more of the uh, Rapala OG Slim flat-sided balsa crankbaits that are new to the market. Found them in stock at my local Dick's recently and uh, decided to grab a couple more colors of this bait. So very excited about it and the damage that it should do coming up here in a couple months when we've got open water also got my hands on a couple of the well these aren't new but the the Berkeley Fritz side flat sided cranks so I, I actually haven't used those baits before but Chris Curtis says, are you at New Liberty, the new tackle bag in Scorch? Dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, repost your comment. Let me know what you're asking in specific words because that doesn't make sense to me. I, I felt like I was going to talk about something else tonight, 
um, before hopping off, but I don't want to hang out too long and stress my voice more than necessary. If you guys have questions, please do ask. Uh, we'll hang out for a few more minutes before I dip out of here. Here is a cool rigging I, I posted a picture on Instagram this morning of, and this is the Strike King Thunder Cricket bladed jig with the 10,000 fish Yoda worm as the trailer. You guys saw me unbox the Yoda worm last week on my live stream. <coughs> this is a cool little bait that I think has a unique design. It reminds me of, more than anything, the, the Gee Crack or G Crack Bellows Gill that I also opened for you guys that has even a wider profile, more like a bluegill. So this is designed to be a bladed jig trailer, primarily, but also like a soft jerk bait, um, kind of like a, a swim bait, can be fished on a Texas rig or on a shaky head, but it's got a tremendous amount of kick. So I rigged this thing sideways on the back of this Thunder Cricket, and I think it's going to slay come springtime. So really excited about this pairing. Riley says, also Tyler got your package sent back to me. I'm gonna try and send it through FedEx this time. Interesting. Guggen Slayer, what's up dude? You barely made it. Been on for 45 minutes and uh, we already kind of talked about the gist of what we were going to. I showed you guys the new baits that I've got and we talked about finesse jigs and some of my favorite finesse jig trailers. And when we say finesse jigs, we're talking about like bitsy bugs, tiny little 1 8, 3 16 ounce jigs, not like quarter ounce or 3 8 ounce football head jigs, which is a little bit different of a category. That said, we could still talk about that another time. Um, I do have a couple of these quarter ounce Strike King Tour Grade football jigs that I'm excited to, to put to use. And, um, and some of the jigs that I built more recently from these fantasy football jig heads from Picasso that I, I talked about, I trimmed up and made those skirts finesse cut. So really turned these into finesse football jigs that are more like 3 8 ounce. So here's what I, here's the first jig that I made with that June bug colored jig head and a little June bug colored skirt. Check that thing out. Black on top, blue and purple on bottom. Just imagine when I throw that June bug colored turbo cross from Z-Man up on there. Shoo. Gonna get a lot of flake and flash in that puppy. Excited about it. Your tackle warehouse package got delayed? Yeah, that's been pretty typical for the last, you know, two months since Black Friday, to be honest. Everybody's been experiencing that, so. Um, I'm curious, so no BJ in here? Is Frankie still in here or what? Frankie, I want you to hit me up after this stream and, uh, and let me know if it was you that was asking for a reel last time that we were on here. Chris says, how to write that color is a jig. Jig heads are Jake and I like that. What? Dude, Chris. You're typing too fast. I don't know what you're talking about. So earlier you said you have a new tackle bag that you picked up at Walmart. That's legit. Good for you, man. Riley says, have a good rest of your night. You got to dip out of here? All right, no worries. One more thing before you go. Okay, what do you got? A 
few other pairings that I, uh, I get out of here, Riley. Thank you. One more thing, one more dollar before you get out of here. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Have a great rest of your night. And if I don't see you again this weekend, have a good rest of your weekend. Two more pairings that I've got rigged up here that I posted on Instagram this week. One is the new Z-Man, um, shoot, what do they call this thing? This is the Willow Vibe Chatterbait. So check this out. This, this is a Willow Leaf blade instead of the standard hexagonal blade on a Chatterbait with a round ball, like Damiki head style jig head. It's got a smaller two off hook on there and perfectly fits with this three and three quarter inch trailer here. This is the Strike King Baby Z2, which is a fluke style Elastec trailer. And uh, boy, oh boy, this is the Shiner color Chatterbait and the Arkansas Shiner Color trailer. And look at that action that it's just going to have right behind it. This thing wants to kick a lot. So really cool bait here. This is the smaller one quarter ounce version. But I actually did pick up a couple more of them um, in like the three eighths ounce. So we'll see how each one of them fishes and in what scenarios each one excels because this is a lightweight jig head and this blade is bound to displace less water than a standard chatterbait and therefore have a little bit more erratic action. Somebody said in the comments of my post that they've had difficulty keeping the bait down in the water column, that it just wants to rise and roll over and kind of act funny. So I'm curious to know if the 3 8 ounce version rides a little bit more true because I've had the same experience with the flashback mini chatterbaits, which come in a 1 16th and a 1 8th. The 1 8th has been a whole lot better for me in terms of being able to ride true and stay down. Ron Holly, you're absolutely right. Discount Tackle has awesome shipping. So free shipping for over 60 bucks, $5 shipping for anything less, and it comes quick. They ship out same day or next day, like no matter what, and it comes fast. So um, I highly recommend that you check out Discount Tackle. If you're having issues with Tackle Warehouse. Also, just if you like saving money on your tackle. So now another thing that I posted about on Instagram the other day is this cool little rig here. I don't fish spy baits myself. Um, I know that they are super effective, um, especially at targeting suspended fish, smallmouth and spotted bass in particular. But um, a spy bait is a lure that you're going to work slow and steady through the middle of the water column to get fish to come up and get it. Um, it is a straight retrieve bait, kind of a do nothing type of bait. And uh, you know, they look like jerk baits, but with props on the front and back. So I've made my own here with a recycled swim bait with the tail cut off. You know, a lot of times you'll fish a paddle tail swim bait and the tail will get bitten off. So on the back here, this is a little accessory made by a Japanese company called Zapu. And this little thing is called the Para R. P-E-R-A space R. And it literally just screws into whatever soft plastic you want to use. So it's got a screw keeper with a little plastic bead. Awesome little deal there. And then on the front, I've got it rigged on a Mega Bass Okashira screw head. Mega Bass Okashira screw head has been a very, very popular and effective um, jig head 
especially when paired with say the three inch Megabass Spark Shad or the three inch Megabass Hazadong Shad. Um, you know, tiny little three inch paddle tail swim baits. So I thought I would get a little bit creative and create my own little homemade spy bait out of a soft plastic lure. And uh, I'm curious to see how this thing produces. So anyway, I was just wanting to get people's thoughts and opinions on that. If you don't follow me on Instagram, do me that favor, hop on there. Um, I do post a lot of my, my cool ideas, uh, pictures of new baits that I get, pictures of kind of favorite lures of mine. And during the season, I will post, you know, uh, a fair amount of my fish catches as well. So anyway, guys, I'm going to dip out of here. There's just four of you in here. I appreciate you guys' time. There's 10 thumbs up and I super appreciate that as well. Sorry that you couldn't hang out with us for a little bit longer, Guggen Slayer, but feel free to refresh after I hop off out of here and uh, check out some of the baits that I picked up. Leave a comment down below. Engage with me in the comment section. Uh, send me a DM on Instagram. I tend to reply to everything. So hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Have a good Saturday tomorrow. May or may not see you tomorrow night. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers, guys.